know that uh, I wasn't sure whether Deacon Ricks would be on or not. I know he had called me yesterday, and I just didn't read my messages. So I think he may have been letting me know that he wouldn't be, they wouldn't be available. Mother Barnes, you all? Just got on. Just got on. All right. Just got all right. on. Well, then, I'm glad that you got it all. Uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, uh, we'll start this morning. And uh, actually, uh, I don't know whether Sister Manny is on or not. If she is, uh, she could take uh, minutes. Uh, if if not, uh, maybe somebody will, or we we may have to, we may have to. Uh, take abbreviated minutes today. But anyway, we're going to ask uh, Mother Bonds if you would give us an opening song, and Reverend Faison, if you would give us prayer. Okay, okay. Oh. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder, so does of the cross. Every round goes higher, higher. Every round goes higher.
I'm sorry. It's from Galatians 3, 23 through Galatians 4 and 7. And in today's lesson, Paul continues to teach the Gal Galatians about the difference between the works of the law and faith in Jesus Christ. And as he did, he said, before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law. And that was keeping the believers from the knowledge of faith in Jesus Christ, which had not yet been revealed. And then he says, the Jewish laws were our teachers and guide until Christ came to give us right standing with God through our faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subjected to the law or the schoolmaster. For now we are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. We who have been baptized into the union with Christ have been covered with Christ. Paul said, all of you are one in Jesus Christ. We are no longer Jews or Greeks or slaves or free men or men or women. We are all is all one. And now that we are <clears throat> that we are in Christ, that we belong to Christ, we are true descendants of Abraham and all of God's promises to him belong to us. And then at, in Galatians four, one through seven, he said, Remember this, Joe, he said, If a father dies and leave great wealth to his little son, the child is no better off than a slave until he grows up, even though he actually owns everything his father has. He has to do what his guardians and managers tell him until he reaches whatever age his father has set. And that is the way it was with us before Christ. Paul said, we were slaves to Jewish laws and riches, for we thought they could save us. But when the right but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman and born under the law, to redeem us who were slaves to the law, so that he could adopt us as his very own son. And then he says, And because we are his son, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Now we are no longer slaves, but God's own sons. Everything he has belongs to us. Now when we look really look at this lesson, you know, the laws are provided to govern and ensure that society is functioning, right? So if there were no laws, what what would guide us? What would what would guide human behavior? But Paul Paul thought Paul taught God's law. So Paul taught that God's law serves a purpose. But when the, when Christ came, the grace grace made it possible for all people to become children of God and heirs of God's promises. And Paul says Paul argues that the fact that before Christ came, we were kept in custody under the law. But Paul said the law had some benefits. He said the law became a tutor, and the word tutor means a private teacher. But in this particular lesson, it does not mean the teacher in your school, regular school. It, the word you use here does not mean that that kind of teacher as you go to school, but it's kind of like an attendant, a custodian, or they call it a disciplinarian, or a guardian. And this is someone who looks after the people, look after the minors. And these people were usually slaves whose job it was <clears throat> to accompany, to train, and to discipline the child. Uh, <clears throat> these slaves lived in the house with their master and their family all those all that time. But they were responsible for that. You know, they were the chauffeur, they were the disciplinarian, they were they were everything to make sure the child went went to school, make sure the the child was protected. They take them to school. They uh, go pick them up. They see to them getting 
for whatever they needed in the way of food and, and all of that, they practically raised the child. And see, and if the parent died, if the father died, and, a, and, and the child was still a minor, they, um, the slave took over. The child could not get anything. He could not do anything for himself because of being a minor. That means the slaves had to look out for him and and have to look out for him until he reached a certain age. Whatever age your father sit, had set for him to be, uh, <clears throat> that's what he had to wait until that time come. And, and that could be many years, many years. And then Paul said, said let, let me explain, Father. He said, although the child may be an heir of all the property and wealth of his father, he's no different from the slave because he and the slave had guardians who make decisions for the child until he reaches the age of a responsible adult. So the uh, slave, they said they were called a disciplinarian or guardian and, and sometimes a tutor. Well, they were responsible for that child until he reached the age. And, you know, it had to be a little bit, um, in some ways, I'm sure it was a little bit of a letdown. The slave has worked for the father all the time. And the child is now inheriting everything. But he's a minor, so they've got to go back and take care of the child. And none of this stuff, this wealth, is theirs. So that that is something that probably touched their heart in a certain way because they say, you know, they have to do all this and yet they don't have anything. And when the child grows up to be at an age of respons responsibility, he can do what he wants to with all his wealth. He can even give the slave something or he cannot. And there's nothing they can do about it. And, and you know, and Paul told him, said, now, this is the way it was with us. So when we were mocking we were just like slaves. We were ordered around by simple instructions with no say in the con conduct of our own lives. And he said, Paul is saying, you know, as long as they just went right by the law, you know, they were ordered around. They didn't have no, uh, no privileges. They couldn't do nothing, no more than what the law would allow them to do. And the people who was conducting all this, those who thought it was all about them, they were in charge. So they would tell all these, these people what to do. First of all, they, they made them think that, well, look, you can only be saved by our laws. And Paul was thinking, Paul says, you know, I have taught them that before, but I have to tell them again because they just don't seem to be getting it. Okay, so, uh, so here's the thing, that the law cannot save you. He said, at which talk we've been through that. We've been all through that before. I taught them that, and I thought they was on the right track, and here comes law, and they say, you know, they're drifting right back with the Jewish law. And so this was, Paul was disappointed, and he was hurt, and he was thinking, what does it take to get through to you? But then he said, now the law supervises until Christ came. So, but now Christ is cool, so we can respond to God through faith. He said, the law teaches, teaches the need for salvation. God's grace offers us that salvation. Paul said, what I'm trying to tell y'all, you couldn't keep the law anyway. It, uh, Nobody could keep the whole law. And so since you couldn't keep the law, why well, try to hang on to the law? He said, you were once, I taught you, you I thought you understood, and you, you act like you understood, and just as soon as I left, then you go right back into the old. So I've told you uh, before that if you start out with God, you start out in the Spirit, you, you should try to end in the Spirit. You don't need to start out in the spirit of trusting God. The next thing you know, you don't, you have fallen back into the law. Mm -hmm. Fallen back, listen to, listen to these people. And the Jewish people, they just wanted, they, they had a fool. Uh, uh, they seemed to act like they had a hold on. They tell them, you can't be, you got to be our uh, law. You got to be circumcised and all that stuff. And had them confused there for a while. But Paul told 
Paul said, now I've told you faith in Christ alone. If you have faith and trust in Christ, that's what you need to be saved. That's what salvation is all about. Name that depended on God every day. Paul said, look, now those who are indeed God's children, you know, he said, they've been justified by faith in Christ. And they receive a new relationship with God. That, that are uh, adopted children. He said, he said, now you, you get a hold of it. He said, he said, now this time when you get a hold of it, hold on to it. Hold on to it. Remember, the law is structured, but salvation, uh, comes through faith and trust in God. And he said, also, so if you belong to Christ, so then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. But, but see, the Jews believed that they were automatically God's people because they were Abraham's seed. But Paul said, not so. He said, uh-uh. Uh, Paul pointed out that Abraham's spiritual children are not the Jews, nor are they those who have been circumcised. Abraham's children are those who respond to God in faith, just as Abraham did. And see, God had given Abraham the promise 430 years before the law. So Abraham already had that promise. But Abraham trusted God. Whatever God said, he didn't question. And he would tell him when he first told him, leave his hometown, leave his home, leave all his kinfolk. He, he left. He took a nephew Lot with him, and he went on and to another place. And wherever, he didn't even know where he was going. But God told him to go, and that was good enough for him. He trusted God. God told him what, look what he did with Isaac, his son. Whatever God told him, Abraham didn't question it. He just only obeyed God. So he had the promises a long time ago. <clears throat> and he said, <clears throat> we, uh, you know, we, we are all... We are called to love people. And see, we're supposed to be to a point where, you know, we love our, our fellow man, regardless of what religion he is, regardless of what race he is, regardless of what age he is. We're supposed to get along and love them. And he says, uh, um, Paul says, you know, we should, Paul says, we should love the church. And we should love our Christian brothers and sisters worldwide. We know that all of them don't feel the same way about us, but we should not let that bother us. And we should always try to try to guide them. If we're the leader, we should try to lead them in the right way. Some people are different than others. Some people it takes a little longer to catch on. There are others that perhaps um, just not there. But then you think about if you if you can help somebody, the song says you travel along this way, then your living is not will not be in vain. You need to <clears throat> well Paul tell us that, you know, we should have more unity than we have. Not so much division. Paul says now when we came to Christ, when Christ came, we came to Christ, then we all became one in Christ. Sisters and brothers in Christ. We don't have to, uh, we didn't, we're not necessarily Jews or Gentiles or, or, or slaves or free men or necessary male and female. But we are all one in Christ. We're on equal standing. One is not above the other. We're all on equal standing because we're all one in Christ. And we should, we should look out for our fellow man. And, and he calls it, we should love the church. And we should love our Christian brothers and sisters worldwide. So we know all of them ain't going to love us. They don't feel the same way about us. But that's all right. Don't, don't let that bother you. We love them anyway. We are called to love people where they're Christian and non-Christian. And we are not to judge them or find a difference between them and us. But we are all one in Christ. And Jesus came, you see, when Jesus came, the law, we didn't necessarily need the law, did we? Because we could go directly to God, have faith in God, we could trust God, 
as opposed to going through these laws. And all these laws that were given to them, they couldn't keep them. Nobody could keep them. Because it says all you need to do is just have one little slip. And it's just like you have messed up the whole law. So you couldn't keep them anyway. And it's hard to keep laws. It's called most like it, you can't just have a, a list down there and a check off a list that well today I didn't kill anybody, today I didn't I didn't, didn't hurt anybody. But then as you go way on down there there may be covered like Paul said, you might have covered with something that your neighbor had. But so therefore you can say maybe you can say one part, but the other part you didn't do. So Paul is saying, Why why get hung up on the law? You can't keep it. You didn't keep it when you had it. And you can't keep it. So why not go where you put your faith in Christ? But see, some of them wouldn't have mind giving up the law. But the fact was, they didn't want to have to put their faith in Christ. Because that would have been all the time they need to trust God. But yet, but yet people say, <clears throat> They say, we keep, we keep the law. We, we won't keep the law. And they couldn't keep the law. They know they couldn't. But somehow or another, it was hard for Paul to kind of get through to them. And, and teach them, say, look now, um, this is the way it is. And, and you look at Abraham. Abraham went on his faith. Said, now, this is what we got to do. This is just what we got to do. We're going to have to trust God. And we're going we gonna to have to grow. We're going to have to learn the things of God, keep a connection with God, stay with God every day, begin your day with God and end your day with God. If you, if you get the word down in your heart, sometimes you, if you don't have time to open your Bible and read, you can just think on the things, what you already know, what you already read. You can, you can study those so that you will know them because there are going to be times when you need the word but you're not going to be able to pick up the Bible all the time and, and read what you think. No, you need it in your heart so that no no matter what, if the enemies have you in a position where they don't allow you to talk or don't allow you to pray, you don't have to, you have, to have it in your heart. And you don't have to even open your mouth, but you are, you're talking to God all the time, and they don't even know it. This is why, why depending on God, Trust in God, faith in God. That is what all of that can do for you. So Paul is telling them now, you know, we're we gonna go over this again now. So Paul says, uh, we're we gonna go through it again. Uh, it's best to trust in God and have faith in God. That's the word about the law. So now the law was all right. It served its purpose. Kind of, it kind of kept us in the straight and narrow. But, but you know, it couldn't save us. So that's what I'm trying to tell you that the law can't say it. And you don't need the, uh, the, the trusting in God, believing in God. That's one thing. He said, but now when it comes to the law, so you, you can't mix these things up. Don't start out with the, with God and end up trying to fix everything yourself. So no, that doesn't work. You don't need that. It will not work both ways. So Paul is saying, uh, <clears throat> You choose one way or the other. If you go, if you love the Lord like you pretend you do, you say you do. So now, if, if that's the case, then you go ahead on and um, trust God. So, but now, if you plan on living by the law, then you need to live by the law. You can't do both of them. All you're doing is just messing yourself up, confusing yourself, and, and you know, that's not the way God operates. God wants us to trust him and trust him freely, trust him fully. But Paul is saying, you know, y'all just can't have it but we. You're either going to be with God or you're going to, you're going to uh, trust in the law. You trust in God or trust in the law. That's going to be your choice. So Paul told him, said, uh, <clears throat> that, we're not judge people, or we're not to find a difference between people. Sometimes, if we meet you know, a Christian and a non-Christian, we're supposed to treat them both right. And and with the love of God in us, then we shouldn't have any problem in treating anybody right, even your enemies. Because sometimes, you know how that can be. That can be hurtful, that can be painful, and all of that stuff. 
But when you trust God and you lay it on God, then he'll take care of all of it. That's his job anyway. That's his job to take care of all of it. And you know, <clears throat> we we got to think about how we judge other people. You know, we got our faults too. And somewhere I read that some people are called EGR Christians, which means extra grace is required. So some of us need a little more than some of the others, maybe. Some of the others may have got a little more mature in this Christian walk. But Jesus came to pay a debt he did not owe because we owed a debt we could not pay. And so as we go, as we continue in this life, we need to think about the fact that God, we're going to trust in God. And as Joshua says, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So um, this is what we need to do. And the our quote for the day says, accept what is, let go of what was, and have faith in what will be. Are there any comments? Oh. Trustee Luna, I enjoyed the Sunday school lesson this morning. We talked very well for you. Thank you. As always, I always enjoy your listening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have a comment. As always, uh, Brother Dancer enjoyed the message. I appreciate it. Thank you. Are there any other comments? If, if not, let's conclude our Sunday school lesson for today. Lesson, and thank each of you who have taken part in the Sunday school this morning. There's, uh, do we have a uh, anyone that would like to add the closing remarks to the Sunday school? Anything that you gathered from the Sunday school this morning? All right. But we'll take the comments that have already been given because we know we. We heard a couple of comments that say that they have got something from the lesson this morning, so we thank God for for, the, for them. Trustee Ruth, we thank you for the Sunday School lesson. Uh, just a reminder for them, thinking, thinking about it, uh, next Sunday, Anderson Chapel will be starting our morning service at 1030. So Sunday School may start a few minutes early so that we may be ready at 1030. Um, there will not be uh, a devotional period in between the Sunday school and the morning service on next Sunday. So uh, let us uh, be prepared for that. Uh, again, uh, uh, Pastor Lewis, I, I did not have. Yes. Um, I, 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 I took a few notes um, if you want me to read them. Thank you. I was just getting ready to ask that. Thank oh, okay. I didn't know whether you had, had got past that part. Uh, unless somebody else did it now. Okay. Uh, anybody else did it? Yeah, uh, yeah, and there was uh, 11 uh, that was uh, logged in on a free conference call. So, okay. all right. All right. I'll do the best I could. If any, anybody else on that took notes? If not, I'll go ahead. Uh, Anderson Chapel, St. Right. Stephen's uh, Sunday School. On this fifth Sunday, October the 29th, 2023, uh, began right at around 10 o'clock uh, a.m. Uh, opening prayer, Pastor Malcolm E. Lewis, song, Mother Barnes, we are climbing Jacob's Ladder. I don't know whether it's the name of it or not, but uh, <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> what's the name of the song about? But our prayer was by Reverend Faison. The lesson for today, I didn't get the topic, but the lesson for today was um, brought to us by Christy Nancy Wooten. And correct me on the Bible verses, I had uh, Galatians 3 uh, through 23, 3, 23, and 4, uh, 7. So could you correct me on that, uh, Christy Wooten, for the minutes? It was Galatians 3 and 23. Through Galatians four one through seven. Okay, all right. There you have it. Uh, the um, um, couple people uh, responded to the message, and I have um, the, the, the lesson in around ten twenty seven uh, for a total of about twenty seven minutes, and you say you had eleven, and as always, I can't tell how many I have until I sign off. Um, that's, that's what I have. Thank you, Brother Daffy, for keeping those uh, minutes there. Thank you. Uh, again, each of you for joining in with us on this trip to the Sunday School, and I'm real glad that we were able to uh, be able to adjust uh, as I get more familiar with the technology that I'm dealing with. And uh, in response to a few people asking about if, uh, if Anderson Chapel is still to do the Sunday school on this Sunday, uh, thank God that he has given us the knowledge and the ability to be able to connect for Anderson Chapel. And then uh, we will join uh, the Western Union of Bear Creek uh, already in progress. So we thank you again. Uh, we will dismiss uh, uh, Anderson Chapel St. Stephen's uh, Standard School. For those of you that are able, please uh, stay around for the uh, morning service at uh, uh, the Western Union of Bear Creek. Uh, Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for your grace and mercy. We thank you for allowing us to come together. But Father, even in the midst of times such as this, we pray, Lord, that the lesson today will touch the hearts and minds of your 